Hello and welcome to Nature Day's Outdoor Learning Resources. Now today we're going to learn all about soil. So my challenge for you today is to investigate and explore the different types of soil you have in your garden. Now soil is made up of four main components. We have the old mineral content, which is made from stones, the organic content made from dead plants, such as twigs and leaves, water, and the last one is air. Now you can mix all those components together as much as you like, and you still won't have soil. So there are two other really important components in soil. The next one is the biota, or the animals. So the animals inside the soil are a vital component of that soil, and they take those stones, they break them up, they erode them, and they also digest and decompose the organic maxa, and they mix them all together. So your worms are going to be eating your dead plants, they're going to be then excreting out the soil, and then the soil is going to be mixed up when they move around, they're going to incorporate more air, that's going to allow water to filter in and to infiltrate down through the soil. So the biota are helping to produce the soil as well and mix it all together. Because when these stones are added to the soil, they're added at the top of the bedrock, which is way underneath below the soil. And in order for that mineral content to come all the way up to the whole layer of soil, it needs to be moved. And that's our biota, especially our worms. The other factor, the really important factor, and this is why soil is so important, is it takes time to create soil. And in fact, it takes a good 200 years to make just one centimetre of soil. That's an awful long time. So we do need to take time to create soil. And that time especially is for making the mineral content. Making rocks takes an awful lot of time. Eroding them or breaking them down into smaller bits takes a lot of time. The worms then need to move that round and mix it all up and transplant it from one place to another place in the soil layers. And our organic matter takes time for it to decompose and to break down. And it takes a little bit of time for the water to filter through, but not a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little experiment just to find out what type of soils you could have in your garden. Now, you need to get your hands dirty for this, which is always a good idea anyway. And you need a pile of soil. Now your soil could be wet if it's rained, but you may need to add a little bit of water to your soil in order to do these experiments. The first thing we're going to find out is what the mineral content of your soil is. We want to find out if the minerals inside your soil are clay, which is a very complicated molecule which has got iron at the centre of it, or whether they're silty, which is like a flowery consistency, or whether they're sandy, and you all know what sandy's like. So we're going to find out what though, whether it's got components of those three by just feeling it. So we're going to do a feel test. So all you need is a hand soil. So take a small piece of soil and just rub it between your fingers like this. I'll try and find a bit which isn't full of big lumps of, of stones. And just rub it between your fingers. Now, does it feel gritty or does it feel silky? So if it goes to the point where you can literally feel with your fingers between it and then it just feels really quite silky, then you've got a silty soil. So silky makes silty. If it feels kind of slippery and your fingers are kind of sticking to it and maybe sliding around and it's getting a bit slimy, then you've probably got a clayey soil. If, when you take your fingers through it, you can feel grittiness and there's lumps, so I can feel them here because this bit is very sandy. So if it's gritty, we've got a sandy soil. If it's silky, we've got a silty soil. And if it's slippery and slimy, you've got a clayey soil. Now you might say that's not the best way of determining what type of soil you've got. So there is another way we can do it. And we can see how much clay there is in the soil. Now if you've ever played with clay, then you'll know that it sticks together. So we're going to find out how much this soil sticks together. And that will determine whether we've got a high proportion of clay or not. 
So the first thing we're going to do is take some of our soil, a big handful this time, make sure there's no rocks in it. I told you there's rocks inside our soil. And make sure there's also not too much organic matter, so you can see the components of soil already. So you want to have a handful of proper, real soil. Bit of water to make it wet. So you're going to get your hands dirty. And then see if you can roll it into a ball. There we go. One soil ball. And if it stays as a, boil, as a ball, then you can carry on. So we've definitely got some clay in here. If it didn't even make a ball, then we probably have a very sandy soil and it's not holding on to that structure so we can't make a ball. So if you can't do this stage, you haven't got a clay, much clay in your soil. You've probably got a very silty or sandy soil. But now we've done that, we're gonna look at the next thing we can do. So we've got our ball. Can we turn our ball into a sausage? So I'm gonna roll it between my hands and see if, I, if, you, if you're finding it does fall apart, add a bit of water. That might help. Roll it and let's see. Da -da, we have a sausage. Okay, so this has got quite a big amount of clay in it because I can make a sausage. Excellent. But if we want to see if it's got mostly clay, we need to see if we can do the next stage. Now I need to make my sausage a bit longer for this. And I just found there's a great big stone in the middle of mine. This isn't going to help. And I need to see if I can make this into a curse shape without it breaking. So can I bend it round? Yeesh. Yeah, I can, but it is breaking. The other one is, if it does make a curse, can we actually make a donut? So let me take that stone out, add a bit more of this, a little bit more water. So can I make this sausage go round into a full circle without it collapsing? So, <laughs> yeah, that's a no. So the majority of this is not clay. So we've got some clay because we can make it into a ball. We've got quite a bit of clay because we can make it into a sausage. We've got maybe a small percentage because we can make it into a sausage, but we haven't got a large amount. It's not mostly clay because we cannot make it into that donut or even that k shape. So my challenge for you to go around your garden and see what types of soil you've got. If you look at the Nature Days blog, then there's a sheet there from the Field Studies Council which will help take you through the steps so that you can find out what type of soil you've got. Other ways in which you can look at your soil, of course, is the colour of it. You can use this, just rub it on some paper and find out what colour it is. And the other thing I want you to explore is the different layers of soil. Now you've got different layers. The top bit where the plants are growing is your top soil. You've also got subsoil. So if you can dig down deep enough with a trowel or with a spade, you might see a change in colour or a change in texture. So go from the top, make sure you ask permission before you start digging up somebody's garden. And I wouldn't suggest you do this in a flower bed that's been used, using a lot of organic matter or anything nasty like pesticides. Try and find a bit that's not been used for anything growing like crops or flowers. So in a lawn, underneath trees, those are good places. So dig up, look down, look down your spade, you'll see at the top, you'll have the top layer, and as you go down, see if you can see any distinct colours or changes in texture. As you go down, you've got your different layers. This is called your soil profile. And those different layers will have different properties. So explore those different ones. Do the touch test, the texture test, see if you can work out what the difference is between those different layers. And then if you found out you've got really high clay content in your soil, then yes, you can use it as clay. So why don't you see what you can make? You could make some little clay figures. You could make a clay pot or a clay, clay cup. You could even try and make some clay faces on the buildings or on your trees if you've got any there. There's so much you can do with your, with your soil. And of course, it's brilliant for the plants. That's the whole point. That's what we really want. So once you've had a go 
at doing your your soil investigation. I'd love to hear about your soil. If you can take photos of your soil profile, or if you manage to make a donut like mine didn't, then you could make take a photo of your donut, and I'd love to see if your soil will stay together. My crows are being very noisy today. So, good luck. Enjoy exploring your soil. And when you've finished, go wash your hands. Please tweet hashtag Nature Days or at Dawn Nature Days. And I'd love to see any of your photos. Don't forget to look on the blog to see how to fill in the worksheet and also how to find out how to do these test tests. Good luck. Enjoy. Have fun.